When it comes to writing your documents, and let's say to help you write them, you used information from books, websites, magazines, and so on, it's a good idea to give credit where credit is due and let your readers know where you got that information from, the least of which is to avoid plagiarism or copyright laws. So, you can go through your document and flag those quotes or bits of information with what are called citations. And a citation is a short reference to those sources. For example, if I have this paragraph here that I got from a book, I place my cursor at the end of it and in parentheses I type in the author's last name and page number that I got it from. It's pretty simple, but that doesn't give me much information like how many authors have the same last name and what book is it referring to. Basically, with the citation, we're flagging, and if we want to know more about what we flag, at the end of the document, we'll have what's called a bibliography page, which will explain in detail all these different flags or citations that we place throughout our entire document. So, you can look at the author's last name and page number as a citation, and then go to the end of the document, the bibliography page, and cross-reference the author's last name with the page number, and there, We'll have the actual name of the book and any other pertinent information that we want to put into the bibliography page about what we just cited, like this paragraph if we copied it from a book. Now basically you have two choices. You can either type in your citations like open parentheses, author's last name and page number, but that assumes a style, and I'll go over that in a minute, because what you cite for a book, the author's last name and page number, is going to be different from what you cite from a magazine or a web page because web pages typically don't have page numbers. However, Word can help us there. Again, you can do it on your own, type it in, and then buy an English book or search the internet and find out how to cite your works, or you can insert the citation with the help from Word, which is what I recommend for two reasons. One, you don't have to buy an English book, and two, once you insert it, it'll have all the information that will be inserted later on into your bibliography page, which I'll show you how to do that later on. So to go ahead and insert our first citation, well, let's do it right here at the end of this paragraph. Come up here, click on the References tab, go to the Citations and Bibliography group, and it's right there. Click on Insert Citation, the drop-down arrow, and we're going to add a new source. But before we do that, it's going to be tagged to a style. Click on the drop-down arrow, and whew, you got a lot of styles there, like the APA, Chicago. Well, the Chicago is typically used for non-educational documents like magazines and newspapers. And the APA is American Psychological Association for Educational Documents. And let's see, the one other that I know, MLA, Modern Language Association for Literature, Arts, and Humanities. Although these others kind of sound cool, like Ghost. In any case, go ahead and choose the one that works best for you. I'm going to go with the default, APA. And then I can come over here and click on Citation to add a new source opens up the window just fill in all the fields that are pertinent to what you want to keep track of so you can reference it later on if you need to find that work that you're citing within your document here or somebody else wants to learn more about it so up at the top first of all what's our source is it from a book let's say it's from what else we got a report select that and then down below go ahead and type in the author's name now when you click in the field look down below for an example so when you type in the author's last name, it'll be last name comma first. And then if you have an additional author, use the delimiter semicolon to separate them. So if I go ahead and type in uh, Shaggy Do, last name comma first, and I want to add my name as well. Let's go ahead and add the delimiter semicolon and then space Kershaw comma Kurt. Now you can do it that way or you can come over here and click on the edit button and you can type in the last name, first name there. And notice how it already has our names down below, which is cool. And if I'm the primary author, well, I'd select me and promote me and move me up. Oh, isn't that fun? And we can do others. And let's go ahead and add another here. And then click Add. Oh, that's fun. Click Okie dokie. And look, automatically added the delimiter right after Mr. Do here. And then promoted me ahead of Mr. Do. Oh, that's fabulous. Let me go ahead and edit this and just get rid of all of them, but Mr. Do, so delete me and delete doc, click okie dokie. And then if you have any corporate authors, go ahead and check that box and fill it in there. And then the title, we'll say it's Essential Oils for a Healthier Lifestyle. And you can see down below if you need an example again, how to write bibliographies. Oh, that's nice. And then the year, we'll do 2016. 
You can type in the publisher, also the city, and if you want additional fields to get a bit more detailed, you can see down below the checkbox, show all bibliography fields for report, check it, and you get quite a few. Now these red asterisks aren't required, they're just, as you can see down below, recommended. So if you want to type in the publisher, the city, and, well, whatever else is there, I'm going to scroll back up, keep it as is, uncheck it, simplify it, and then down below, here's the citation tag. It's got the author's last name and the year. So when I go ahead and click okie dokie, there's the author's last name and the year. Oh, that's fun. And then when you click inside of it, you get the dynamic box because that way, if there's any changes need to be made to it, you can go ahead and to edit it, you need to click on the drop down arrow and to edit the source. And then make your changes and click okie dokie. And we'll learn about that in more detail in the next training video, but there's a heads up if you can't wait to watch it and you want to edit it because you made a mistake. There you go. Let's go ahead and scroll down and do another one. Like, let's do it for lavender. And click at the end of it. And, well, let me hit the space bar, give it some space, then come back up here to the Citation Bibliography group. And let's click on Insert Citation. And, hey, looky there, Mr. Do is available to be cited again. So we don't have to type in the same source over again. He's already there. Click on it, and he's added. Let's go ahead and hit Undo because I don't want to cite the same source. Let's go ahead and click on Insert Citation and add a new source. And this time, the source is going to be a website. Let's see how that works. Okay, the author, same thing as you can see down below in the example. When you click inside the field, last name, comma, first, and you can see it's already got the first couple letters, my last name for the tag name, and then corporate author if you have any. The name of the web page. Well, it's going to be Lavender, and then the name of the website, well, it's going to be doTERRA, and the year, let's do 2010, the month, and you can see down below examples like, do I abbreviate it like J-A-N? I mean, you don't have to go with what you see down below. Again, it's just an example, but I'll go with the recommendation. Let's say it's February, and then the day, let's say it's the 22nd. And then for the URL, you can go ahead and type it in. But if it's one of those URLs that's super long and it's got a bunch of characters and that whole mess, well, go right to the website. Let's go ahead and open it up. Come up here. There's my website. Let's go to www.mydoterra.com forward slash Dreamforce. Then hit enter. This is going to be a great example. And then over to the right. Oh, there's my name. That's my fancy store. Let's go over to the right, click on the Reveal button to Shop. And then what language, what country, well, leave it as is, click Start Shopping. And we want essential oils to look at. We want single oils, not blends, so single. I know I'm flying through this. And then we'll scroll down to find our lavender. Right there, okay, great, click on it. So I can go right to the web page, come up here, it selects the entire URL, Control c to copy, and then we can go ahead and close out of all tabs. Come back in here and Control v as in Victor to paste it, and whew, look at that. It's quite the lengthy URL, but a lot easier than me trying to memorize that or type it in. And then you've got, well, the additional bibliography fields, like the year accessed. And that's a good point because when it comes to websites, things change. Websites can be taken down in a blink of an eye or pages being moved about. So if I access this in 2012 and people in 2013 or 2014 going, hey, are you feeding me full of bologna? Because there's no such thing as a website that has lavender with doTERRA. And you can tell them, well, I accessed it last back in 2012. That's when it was there. Maybe it's a new page, so you'd have to go ahead and search it and then update your citation here, of course, or if you like. In any case, let's go ahead and uncheck that, go back to something simplistic, and click okie dokie. Oh, there we go. Bump me down to the next line. Kershaw, 2010. Gave me the full name for the tag and not the first couple of letters, K-E-R. Here I'm going to show you how you can modify and update your sources and as a result also show those changes within the bibliography. And there are three ways you can edit your sources. A couple of ways is you can do it within the document here, like find the citation, click to put the cursor in it so you can see the box and click on the corresponding drop down arrow. And there you go, 
edit the source and there's the source you can make changes click cancel or you can right click on it in the shortcut menu edit the source opens up the same window close out or you can come up here and click on the references tab go to the citations and bibliography group and manage your sources click on it and I like doing it this way because it has a list of all the sources in the current document or the current list that way I don't have to scroll through a bunch of text to find a citation to right click on it well, it takes too much time. In any case, right here, we got them all lined up. And so if I want to go ahead and edit one of these, we can select it, click on Edit, and let's say his last name is Dues. So we'll add the S. Click Okie Dokie. And because it's part of the master, which let's talk about the master now, anytime you create a source, it gets automatically added to the master list. So, when you're in another document, you're like, you know what, I don't want to recreate the same source. Guess what, you don't have to. Just come up here, click on Manage Sources, come over to the master list, find it, and then click Copy to copy it over into your current document or what it says the current list. Cool, that way you don't have to recreate it. Isn't that fabulous? In any case, the source exists in your master list and current document. Do you want to update both lists with these changes? If I say no, it'll just update the current document not touch the master. So if I say no, he gets an S and the master doesn't get an S. But if I'm like, uh-oh, let me go ahead and put an S in the master, go ahead and, well, with it selected, click on edit. And you know what? All you have to do is delete the S, add the S, Word will freak out and go, oh my goodness, a change has been made. So when you click okie dokie, even though it's the same change, it will say, look, do you want to go ahead and update your master? You can say yes. And then he's now dues. And of course you get the new button if you want to create a new source, click on new. And then when you add the source, it'll add it to your current list and also to the master list. And let's go ahead and play with this. So I've got the three sources here, but I don't have lavender. So when I close out and I come up here and click on insert citation, lavender's not there, right? Or better yet, if I'm in another document or a new blank document, come up here, click on file, go down to new. Click on blank, and then come up here, click on references, and you're like, I'd like to insert lavender. Click on insert citation. <gasps> it's not there. Well, that's okay. We know how to click on manage sources because it's all over there in the master list. Select lavender, click copy, click close. Now it's in the current list, known as the current document. So when I want to insert that citation, it's there. Oh, that was fun. Let's go ahead and close out of here and not save it. And in fact, let's do add the lavender to the citation list here. So click on Manage Sources, select Lavender, Copy, Close Out. Let me scroll down to Lavender, which is right there. Click at the end, Insert Citation. There's Lavender. Oh, I feel better. Okay, next, let's edit the citation within the document. So you can click in the citation, click on the drop-down arrow. And there you can edit the citation. You get the window there, click cancel, or you can right click on it to edit citation. You get the same window, right clicking is just easier for me. In any case, you can add pages, or in other words, type in the page number that you pulled this information from, like it was page 12, click okie dokie. It adds P for page and then 12, that was fun. Right click, and then go to edit citation. And let's get rid of 12. And you can suppress any one of these. If you want to suppress the author, then it'll pull in the title. And what it means to suppress is just hide it. So it's not available or showing in the citation. But it will be in the bibliography. It's just the citation. Hence, edit citation. Click okie dokie. And it got rid of it. But we've got our title there, which is Lavender. So let's go ahead and right click to edit citation. And not suppress the author. Click okie dokie. And hey! There we go, I'm there, as well as the title, Lavender. Now let's go ahead and scroll down to the end here, our bibliography. And remember, we updated the source to dues with the S, that's plural, not D-O-O. -O. And so if you want to go ahead and update this, you can do it one of a couple of ways. You can click in it, and you get the update citations and bibliography. Click on it, it'll update it. You can, of course, right-click on it. You get the shortcut menu to update it. Or if you want to be able to update everything within your document because you have other dynamic fields that we talked about in earlier training videos, you know, like when you're inserting a caption, 
Well, it also works not only with captions to update, but anything else that's dynamic, like your bibliography, is to do Control A to select everything within your document, and then hit the F9 key on the keyboard, and it will update everything. Refresh it. And there you go. I've got the S, and oh, and it also added lavender. I'm glad it remembered because I forgot. The cover page is the first formatted page in the document that typically includes the title of the document and the author's name. Now you can go ahead and create your own, or you can come up here and insert one. Go to the Pages group, and there you go, Cover Page. Your document will make a great first impression with a stylish cover page. Oh, I'm convinced. Let's go ahead and click on the drop-down arrow and see what they got. Find one that you want to work with, and I say work with because after you insert it, you can tweak it. So let's go ahead and click on that one. Pushes down the first page to make way for the cover page. And if you want to work with the image, go ahead and select it. You can resize it. You've got your formatting controls for the picture here. You can also right click on it to change the picture to another one on your computer or online. I'm going to click off and leave it as is. And it says over here, at least in this template, the one that I chose, that you can draw your reader in with an engaging abstract. And it's typically a short summary of the document. When you're ready, just go ahead and click and start typing to add your own summary. There, that's pretty short. Let me go ahead and click off. And how did it know my name? Well, that's curious. And where is this coming from? FamilyEHealth.com and Dreamforce.us. Well, when you go ahead and click, you get this content box here. It's pulling this, and you can see the tag is title. It's pulling it from backstage in the properties. So the properties of the document, which includes the title of the document, the subtitle, and when I click in here, the author, well, you can go ahead and make the changes here, and it'll update the properties backstage, or you can go backstage, file, info selected by default, so just come over here to the properties section, and well, there you go. You've got the title, and I can't see the subtitles, so we can scroll down and say that we want to show all properties. Now, even though I said show all, it's not showing all of them, which we'll go over in just a minute. And you can see, well, it says subtitle, but it's a subject, which has my URL there. Let's go ahead and for the subject or subtitle, as it were, let's do, and then for the actual title, let's do, okay, so any changes I make here, if it's pulling in that field, the template that I chose, it should reflect, let me go back. Hey, there we go, Spirit of Freedom and Freedom 101. Great. And then what about the course title? Where is that coming from? It says course, but I didn't see a field back there. So how about if I just go ahead and type in something because this is how I find or find how Word is interpreting that field or where it's being pulled from. That when I remember what I typed in that field and I go backstage file, I come over here to properties. I don't see the word something. So we can go ahead and click on properties and go to more advanced properties. Click on the summary tab. And do you see something there? Of course you do. And so it's pulling it from the category field, which you can't see it over here in any case. So for that field that's on the cover page, instead of having something, let's do, maybe that's my category. And then for keywords, I'm going to type in something here because as we learned in an earlier training video, if you want to be able to pull in some fields from the properties here, well, it's good to have something in there, and I'll show you how you can pull in keywords if you like. But the whole purpose of the keywords is that when you want to do a search for this document, and in the document you don't have anything like, let's say, tyranny or tyrant, things like that, then Word's not going to find the document. But if you want it searchable by the keywords here, that's not within the document, then go ahead and type it there and you'll find it. In any case, we'll add that. Click okie dokie. Click back, and it updates the course, which is tied to the category field, Constitution and Bill of Rights. Let me go ahead and click off to take a look at that. Okay, not too bad. Um, if I don't like the text above it, I can delete it, or I can just type in, you know, something that looks nice there. And if you want to be able to disconnect from the properties backstage, like when somebody updates the, let me right-click the category, and it pulls into the course, and you don't want it to be pulled in, or vice versa, then in the right-click of that content field, 
you can go ahead and remove the content control so it no longer is updated in either direction, either here to backstage or backstage from the properties to here. Let me go ahead and click at the end, hit enter, and as we learned in an earlier training video, you can insert the property fields by coming up here on the insert tab to the text group and clicking on quick parts. And there you go, document property. And you can pull in the keywords if you'd like. Just whatever you see there. It's in the property field, backstage. Go ahead and select it to pull it in. And let's go ahead and click off. Well, it makes no sense to do it in this cover page here. Let me hit undo. But nonetheless, it's a nice refresher to know that when you create a cover page, where the fields are being pulled from. And if you want to go ahead and tweak it and pull other fields from the properties, well, through the quick parts, you can do that. And then, of course, to show you the other way, if I go ahead and make some changes here, like Kurt Kershaw's. So when I update the author, it's going to update it backstage in the spirit of, and we get rid of freedom, and we just do dot, 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 freedom 101. Okay, let's go ahead and go backstage, file. Let's see, spirit of freedom, it's not updating there. So let's go ahead and click on properties and go to advanced properties because it will show it up there probably when we close out and open up our Word document again, refresh the program as it were, and it should update it here. And also, there I am, plural, many Kershaws, but we'll go back to Kershaw and click okie dokie, hit back, and we're back to a single Kershaw and not many. What you're looking at here is documentation I created for a specific medical billing software program. And you can see down below on the status bar, I'm on page 107 out of 109 pages. And more specifically, I'm on the index page. And an index is an alphabetical guide inserted at the end of your document containing your choice of keywords or phrases with their corresponding page numbers. And that's really nice because after reading the entire document, if I'm like, you know what, I want to look up uh, appointments. You can go to the index and it's sorted and grouped alphabetically. So you can go to the A's for appointments and go, hey, there it is, appointment. You've got the main entry and you have the sub-entries, anything that's tied to an appointment, like checking in a patient, checking out, collecting copay, making appointments, setting up appointment, and you can see the corresponding page numbers that they're on. Now to be able to pull all those keywords or phrases in, we've got to go out to the document and tag them first or mark them, and there's three ways you can do it. But before I show you how you can do it, let's take a look at some of these marked entries like, well, check in, check out, collect copay, well, because they're all on the same page. And what I want to show you when I go to that page is what the coding looks like for these marked entries on that page, which not only can you view the coding, but you can update, make changes to it as well. So for example, it says here, check in patient. Well, typically in the medical industry, checking in or out means it's a patient. And we don't have to have the word patient here. So I can go to that page and say, don't include the word patient. So when I update the index, it just says check in, check out. Or I can go ahead and say collect copay is no longer a sub-entry about appointments. I can make it its own main entry. And when I do that, it'll go over to the C's. And it'll be right there as main entry, collect copay. So let me show you what the code looks like and how easy it is to edit by going to page, well, where all these three are at, page 58. Hit the F5 key on the keyboard. Takes you to the Go To tab. Select page. Type in the page number. Well, it's already in for me. That worked out well and hit enter on the keyboard, takes you right to page 58. Close out, and that's what we're looking at. Click copay, check in, check out patient. Now to be able to see the marked entries or the code, that's the key word, code, come up here on the home tab to the paragraph group and turn on the codes. And there you go. First one for click copay, you got it in wavy brackets. Then inside of that you have XE, and then you have open quotes, you have the main entry, appointment, separated by the delimiter, the colon, to the sub-entry, which is to the right of that, click copay, and then close quotes, and then close wavy brackets. So, if you marked an entry that has both a main and a sub, you'll see it there, and if you're like, you know what, I don't want it to be a sub-entry to appointment, let's just have click copay as a main entry by itself. Well, go ahead and click inside of the quotes and delete or add to whatever you want, just make sure you stay within the quotes. So if I go ahead and delete all that, great. When I update the index, which we'll do in just a minute, it'll now put it in the C's as a main entry. Now again, make sure that when you edit these entries that you stay within the quotes because if you delete the quote or type in something outside of the quotes or delete something, uh, you're going to run into trouble in any case. 
We went ahead and updated that. And then down below, how about check in patient? There's the marked entry to the right of it. And we've got appointment. If you want to update the main entry, maybe make it plural. I know it doesn't make sense because we have check in patient appointments and then check out appointment. Nonetheless, I want to show you that when you make changes like the main entry, how that will look in the index because we'll have two separate main entries, one that's singular and one that's plural. And now that you know how to edit these entries, pretty simplistic, right? Let me show you how you can mark an entry. So if I want to mark print individual charge slips so it can be found in the index with the page number that it's found on, go ahead and click to the right of it. You don't want to click any further over or down. You want to be right next to it, which makes sense when it comes to marking an entry. So that way, when you're looking for something, it'll be right next to that keyword or phrase, as well as when it comes to pagination, because if this code right here, click copay, wasn't next to it, but was way down below here, even close to it, that I added some extra text, well, that will go on to page 59 if I push it far enough, in which case, when somebody comes to page 59 and can't find it, that's because the code's not right next to the keyword, which could still be on page 58. Okay, so go ahead and click to the right of it. And then to mark the entry, to put it into the index, then come up here on the References tab, go to the Index group, and mark it. It opens up the window, and your main entry and sub-entry. You don't have to have a sub-entry, but you got to have at least a main entry. And our main entry will say is for print, like when it comes to printing charge slips, appointments, things like that. Let's put anything that has to do anything with printing under the main entry. And I can have a sub-entry and type in charge slip, but if I don't, and I come down here and click mark, let me close out, it marks it with the main entry, right? But if I'm like, oh rats, I want to go ahead and update that, do I have to remark it? No. We learn how to edit our entries by clicking in the quotes, and to add a sub-entry to the main entry, just, well, add the delimiter colon, and then type it in. So now, when I update my index, I'll have the main entry print, and then the sub-entry charge slip. Let's go ahead and do one more. Let's come down below here to cancel and no-show patients. Oh, that's a good one. Let's do that one. Let's click to the right of that so we can mark it. Come back up here, References tab to the Index group. Click on Mark Entry, Main Entry. We'll do Appointments. Okay, I know I've got two main entries, one singular appointment and one plural appointments. Let's just do it under the plural. And hit the Tab key in the sub-entry. We'll say when it comes to appointments, this is about cancels and no-shows, and then click mark, and there you go, appointments, cancels, and no-shows. Of course, you can go ahead and update that, just stay within the quotes, and you'll be good. Now, that could be very time-consuming, especially if you have one key word that you want to mark throughout the entire document. What you can do instead is the second way that I'm going to show you to mark your entries is to mark all instances of that key word or phrase. So, for example, how about schedule? If I want to go ahead and mark all the keyword schedules within the document, like schedule here for whole time, schedule here for block time, and so on, you have to select the keyword because if you don't, like if I click to the right of it, and I come up here and click on mark entry, well, I can mark it, but I can't mark all instances of it, can I? Of course not. Click cancel, and double click to select it, and then go ahead and come back up here, click on mark entry, and it pulls it in, and it allows us to mark all of it or all the instances of the word schedule. Now, it's case sensitive, so it'll only mark the word schedule with the uppercase S. It won't mark the lower cases. So when you're ready, go ahead and click Mark All, and voila, it's done. Let's go ahead and close, and then do Control F, so we can bring up the navigation pane, and it pulls it up. You can see schedule. Oh, it's got the entry marked for that schedule. For the, oh, that one's marked as well. Oh, well, that was fun. But did it mark it for the lowercase s? No. Or for anything else that was a derivative of it, like, well, the root word is schedule, but it has the er scheduler, so no, it didn't mark that. That's the good news. The bad news is if you're like, um, I don't want it marked on every single page, just on certain pages. Well, if you use that feature, what you could do is after you mark them all, because it's a mark all or nothing, you can do a search and destroy mission. Just do what I'm doing here. Open up the navigation, and when you click on Next, or the down arrow, goes to the instance, and if it's right there, well, you can go ahead and click on the outside of the bracket and hit the backspace key, 
And then once it hits the bracket, when you backspace, it selects the entire field. Hit the backspace key again, and it's gone. You can do it that way, or you can delete it, which is clicking on the other side of it, because the delete key deletes what's in front of the cursor. Hit the delete key once, selects it, delete it again, and it's gone. I'm going to go ahead and hit undo and leave as is. And then the final way to mark an entry is using what's called a concordance file. It's nothing more than just a document with the table in it, and the table is only two columns. The column on the left is all the keywords that you want to be found within the Word document, and then the column to the right are all the keywords that you want to be put in the index after it found the keywords in the first column on the left. Now typically you would say, well, why wouldn't they be the same keywords? Typically they would be, but there are some instances where they may not be the same. In any case, we'll cover that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and take a break, pause the video, and I'll be right back. Whew, thanks for the break. I thought you'd never pause the video. Let's go ahead and create a concordance file by coming up here, clicking on the File tab, going down to New, and clicking on Blank Document. Let's close out of the navigation pane. Now, in your Blank Document, to make it a concordance file, we have to insert a table by coming up here, clicking on the Insert tab, going to the Tables group, clicking on Table, and the table can be no more than two columns, as many rows as you want, or as many keywords you want to search up in the document. So let's go ahead and do a two by five table. And let me type in those words that I'd like to have found within the document, with the left column being those keywords to search up, and then the right column here are the words that I like to see in the index. Whew, that was fast. Okay, let me explain. The concordance file is a file containing a table with words you want Word to search for and mark and then display in your document's index. So what words is it going to be searching for? Anything that you have in your left column. And what is it going to put in the index? Anything you have in your right column. Now typically they're going to be the same. And I'll go over each one. So capitation, it'll find it in the document. And when it does find it, well it should find it, it'll put the capitation as the main entry in the index. And then for carrier, if you want a main entry and a sub-entry, then go ahead over in the right-hand column for the lookup keyword here, in this case carrier. The main entry is going to be insurance companies, colon, as the delimiter, and then the sub-entry carriers. So it's pretty simplistic, as we learned when it comes to editing our marked entries. It's the same thing here. You're just going to go ahead and have that separated. Left-hand side of the colon, main, right, sub. And then batches to batches, and then batch, you'll look for the word batch and then it'll replace it with very funny BART in the index. I know it doesn't make any sense, but I wanted you to know that if you have something that you want it to be able to be off a little bit, in this case, a lot, and you can do it, and it's not tied to it. And then we have something that's, well, a little bit more relatable. Like when it comes to a copay, you collect that at the appointment. So it'll look through the entire document, find the word copay, and then in the index, it'll have the word appointment, and then the pages that that can be found on. Now you can't have anything else within the document, just your table, and it's got to be two columns. And once you have it set up, well, if you need to add more, you can, at the end, hit the tab key and add additional rows here for additional keywords. But you can watch my training video on tables. So let's go ahead and undo that. And let's save it. Click Save. And it's going to be saved to the desktop. And let's go ahead and delete that and call it my spiffy happy-go-lucky concordance file. You can name it whatever you want, just make sure that you know it's a document that has a table in it with two columns that contains, well, what we're talking about here, the definition of a concordance file, that you can go ahead and use that to mark all the entries within the document with those keywords. Let me click Save, that you want it to look up in the left-hand column and put what you see over in the right-hand column into the index. So now that we have it saved, let's go ahead and close out of here, go back to our document, and to go ahead and use that concordance file to mark all the entries, well, just come up here on the References tab, go to the Index group, and click on that guy right there, Insert Index. I know it doesn't make any sense. We're not inserting an index, but this is where you go if you want to use a concordance file to do what's called an auto-mark or automatically mark everything that it finds within that concordance file in your document here. So click on it, and I'm glad you trusted me because guess what? It's right there, Auto-mark. Go ahead and click on it, and it says, hey, where's that happy-go-lucky concordance file? You can name it whatever you want. doesn't matter. Just as long as when it looks inside, it's got it limited to what we just talked about. One table, two columns, 
keyword search, left column, right column, things to go in the index. Go ahead and double click on it and it's done. Wow, that was fast. So between the three, we can do a manually marked entry by clicking next to the word and marking it, or the second option where you can go ahead and do the mark all, which you select a keyword and click on mark all, and it automatically marks all instances of that keyword, or the concordance table, which if you want to go ahead and type in all the keywords, it might be easier for you because you'll probably know what you're looking for and then to just type it in and have it automatically done for you instead of scrolling, scrolling, scrolling and selecting each keyword like capitation and then doing the mark all and then carrier mark all and then finding batches mark all. Well, I think it's easier as far as that goes using the concordance file. And so now that we have it all marked, let's take a gander. Let me close out of the navigation pane and do control end to go to the end of the document and scroll up just a skosh here because there's our index. And what I want to do since I already have the index is I want to update it so it reflects all the changes that I made. And if I can remember all the changes, I'll go over each one that we talked about and see that it reflects here. Now, since I already have the index here, which I'll show you how to insert it in just a minute, I'm going to go ahead and just simply right click on it to update it. But before I do, if I do it right now, I'm going to do a big no-no. And what I mean by that is that if I update it and I don't turn off the codes, I'm going to have incorrect pagination. And that's a big fat, fat no. Because what's going to happen is, is that with all the codes being displayed, well, I'm not going to scroll up to find all those marked entries. Okay, there's a marked entry. But you see how it pushes the text over to the right to make way for the marked entry? Throughout the entire document, it's pushing all the text down. And if it pushes it down far enough, then what's supposed to be on, well, the current page I'm looking at, down below page 108, when I turn off the codes, it may be sucked up to page 107. And so when I insert the index or update the index, it's going to have incorrect pagination. So when I send this off to somebody electronically or print it off, and they come down here and they go to the index, and like, okay, I'd like to look at appointment page 58, and I didn't turn off the codes when I updated this. It could be page 59, or check-in patient could be on page 57. So when I go to page 58, it's not there. So you got to turn off the codes, okay? Let's come up here on the Home tab to go to the Paragraph group, turn it off, and look at that. You see how it collapsed? All right, now that I have the codes turned off, I can go ahead and either insert an index, or in this case, update it. And I can do that with a simple right-click. Now, I don't like updating it because when I do that, it changes the format. So if I like the format here, the layout, well, I'll show you. It updates it, but it, it changes it. Let me go ahead and click on update. And you see the format's changed. I don't get the leader with the dot, dot, dot. So it leads my eye over to the numbers here. So if I'm looking at make appointment and my eye ski waver around, oh, it's on page 41 or 64. Well, you get the idea. That's why we have leaders to lead me over or my eye to the corresponding page number that make appointment can be found upon. So what I can do instead, when I right click, instead of updating the field, I would edit the field and then come up here and click on index and it opens up like I'm inserting the index, which I am, because I don't want the same one here, like the from template, which we'll go over in just a minute when you insert an index. You can choose the different formats. I like classic, gives you a preview, and the page numbers are right next to the main entries, sub entries. Well, how about if I do a right align so it puts it over to the right and so I don't lose my way, take me to your leader. You only get three choices. I'm going to do dot dot dot, takes me right over to it, click okie dokie, give it a second, replace it, of course. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Cool. Now let's try to remember everything that we did and all the changes that we made. So first off, we have our main entries, appointment and then appointments, plural. So we have checkout patient under, well, the singular. And then under plural, we've got our cancel and no-shows and check-in patient. Cool. That worked out. And then appointment, well, that's from my concordance file. Let's go ahead and right-click on the document down below, the button that is, to get the jump list. And go up to my spiffy happy-go-lucky concordance file. Click on that. And remember, the left-hand column is the keyword that it's looking up within the document. And then when it finds it, it tags it with the word appointment on the page that it found the copay on. So copay appointment, if I go back here, it found the word copay 
that it tagged with the keyword in the index on page 19, 22, 23. So you want to go ahead and take a look, see if copay is found on page 19. I do. Let's go ahead and hit the F5 key on the keyboard. Type in 19, hit enter. Takes us right to it. And where's the copay? Okay, brother. Let's go ahead and do control F. Type in copay. Ooh, look at all them copays here. Well, with them highlighted, let's go ahead and turn on the codes. Do I dare? Let's turn it on, because it may bump out quite a ways if I had a lot of codes, but it didn't go too far. And hey, there it is, copay. And it tagged it there with appointment. Now, it didn't do it to that one. That one's plural. That makes sense. Copays, copays. It didn't do it to that one, so it's case sensitive. So as you recall, back in my spiffy happy-go-lucky concordance file, copay is uppercase, the letter C. And so when I come back to my index, it only tagged or marked it as an entry when it found the uppercase C in copay. Cool. Let's go ahead and turn off the codes and do control end to go to the end of the document. Let me close out of the navigation pane and scroll back up. And we were looking for batches and it found the keyword batches in the concordance file in those pages. And we were looking for the word batch. When it found batch, it was going to put in very funny Bart. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the V's. There you go. Wherever it found the word batch, which is on page 18, 21, 50, and so on, it put in very funny Bart. And let's go ahead and scroll up. Oh, there we go. Almost forgot. We had print, and then for that main entry, you had charge slip. And let's go ahead and scroll up to the eyes. Because then we had the main entry insurance companies with the sub-entry as carriers. And so wherever it found, carrier, which is on these pages here, it marked it as carriers. In any case, let's go ahead and show you how to insert an index, which is really simple. So to insert it, let me go ahead and delete what I got here. Let me turn on my code so I can make sure that I delete it in its entirety here. Drag. Hold down the shift key and click at the end. Hit the delete key and then come up and click just below the index. And then to insert your index, come up here, click on the references tab. Now remember, it's a big fat no-no if you update your index or you insert an index with the codes turned on. Let's go ahead and click on the home tab, go to the paragraph group, turn off the codes. And why do we turn them off? because everything's going to be pushed down and be pushed onto the next page, most likely. And so it'll show the index of all the keywords on the next page when it's actually on the page before it. So now that the codes are off and it's not pushing everything down with those marked entries, to go ahead and insert your index, come up here, click on the References tab, go to the Index group, and click on Insert Index, which is the same place that you go to when you want to use the concordance file to do an auto mark. So it's right here, and there's the default, and you can choose something from the template list. How about something fancy? Well, that's kind of fancy. Let's do right align page numbers, and to lead my eye to those page numbers, let's do a leader dot dot dot. Looks great. Click okie dokie. Uh, you want to replace the index. Uh, looks like I didn't delete the index in its entirety. I might have missed a code here, but we'll go ahead and say yes. And it looks pretty cool. And so this time, let's see if I can go ahead and come up here on the Home tab, turn on the codes, and see if I can delete everything this time so it doesn't ask me if I want to replace it. Hit the Delete key. Hit Enter. Hit Enter. I think I got everything. Let's go ahead and do it really fast. Up here, References. Go to the Index. Click on Insert. Let's go ahead and choose right align. Take me to your leader. No, I like classic, or we can do fancy. That's okay. Right align again. Go ahead and choose the leader and click okie dokie. There you go. Now it didn't ask me to replace it, did it? Totally inserted it. And if that went too fast, you can go ahead and rewind it and play it over and over again. Of course, I made the mistake of leaving the codes on. That's not a good thing. So I have to go ahead and undo that. And then with it right there, let's come on the home tab, turn off the codes. And let's do it again. References, index, insert index. Now yeah, let's do modern, right align, leader, okie dokie. There we go. Now that was done correctly.
This training video is contingent upon you knowing how to insert a caption, because if you don't know how to insert one correctly for your images, tables, or equations, then this training video isn't going to work. So you'll want to watch my captions training video, and in it I explain what captions are and how to insert one correctly. And I've got two in my document here that I want to show you. There's the first one. And for the image, I didn't type in text below it, but I used the insert caption feature. And I did it also for the next one right there. Now, assuming that you inserted captions for your images, tables, and or equations using the word caption feature, what I'm going to show you here is that you can insert a table at the beginning of your document that will display all the images, tables, or equations that you tag throughout your entire document with their captions and corresponding page numbers that they can be found upon. Why would you want to do that? Well, if it's an instruction manual, for me, it's a lot easier to look through a table of figures, see the caption and page number it can be found upon, than having to search throughout the entire document if I want to skip a few steps and go right to a particular step. Now, I don't have any tables or equations, but that's okay, because once you learn how to insert a table of figures, you can easily insert the others. Let me show you, neighbor. Let's go ahead and do Control Home to go to the beginning of the document, because typically, tables are inserted at the beginning. Well, that's what I'm going to do here. And then to insert a blank page above this, let's go ahead and hold down the control key, hit enter, and scroll up. Come up here on the home tab to the paragraph group, turn on the codes, and I want to do it before the page break, hit enter, and well, let's do it a couple of times. Um, the paragraphs are in courier. I'm going to go ahead in the mini formatting toolbar, type in TIM for Times New Roman. That's better. And I want a label for my table of figures. So in the first paragraph, let's do center line and say this is table of figures. Hold down the shift key, hit the home key to select from the end to the beginning of the line. And let's go ahead and make it a larger size, 14. Okay. And then let's go ahead and insert a table of figures right in that paragraph. To do that, come up here, click on the references tab, go to the captions group, and there you go. Now notice it doesn't have an insert table of tables or table of equations. Why? Because it's one-stop shopping. It's all in the table of figures. You want to see? Okie dokie. Click on it. Opens it up. Table of figures. But also, not only figures, but the other caption labels are equation and tables. They're all right there. Oh, that's nice. I suppose Microsoft didn't want to have three separate ones, but just put them all in here. In any case, go ahead and select which one you want. Like if it's a table for all the equations that you inserted captions for, well, there you go. But this one's for the two figures that we have in our document. And then up above, you get a preview that, depending upon how you tweak it below, if you don't like it, then do some more tweakage. Like if you don't want to show page numbers, get rid of it. They're not showing. If you do want to see them, well, there you go. You can write a line or not write a line. If you write a line, then you get the option to have a leader or not. So if you don't have a leader, it doesn't lead your eye from figure 3 over to, oh, it's page 10, right? Well, for me, if I don't have a dot, 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 it might be a little bit difficult to follow this line right here, that it takes me right to 7 and not have my eye ski wavering around and going to page 3. So let's go ahead and do a leader. Or if you decide to change the format, you've got the from template, which, by the way, the from template from all the others is the only one that you can modify. So if I choose classic, can't modify it. If I choose distinctive, can't modify it, and so on. So if I go ahead and choose from and click on modify, table of figures selected by default, go ahead and click on modify and just go to town. This window should be familiar to you if you watch my styles training video. If not, you want to watch it because, well, we go over it in great detail. In any case, go ahead and make your changes here. Like if you don't want courier, you want a different type of font, or click the format, choose your paragraphs, tabs, however you want to set this up for your table of figures. I'm going to click cancel and not do that and click cancel here. But instead, I want something classic. And then let's do a leader, cool. And then, well, you can include label and number if you uncheck that. The labels disappear. And the numbers, well, it's reordered here to let you know it's text 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but I want to include it, so I'll check it. Click okie dokie, and there we go. Oh, that's nice. Well, let's turn off the codes, because that kind of gets in the way. Go to the Home tab, Paragraph group, turn it off. All right, so when you hover over it, notice you get the Control-Click option to take you right to that figure. 
So no God equals low test scores. Let's go ahead and hold down the control key. I get the finger. Go ahead and click on it. it takes me right to it. No God equals low test scores. And if you want to update it and low morals, well, once you've done the update, let's do control home. Go ahead and right click anywhere and say you want to update the field. Do you want to update just the page numbers? Well, when it comes to pagination, if I added some extra pages or deleted some text where, like for this one on page four is on page three, well, you can update the number. But to capture the update of what I did when I edited the caption here, low test scores, well, I need to update the entire table, which also includes the page number. So go ahead and click okie dokie, and there you go. Low morales. In any case, let's go ahead and do control click to the ducks. Let's scroll up above. Click before them, control enter, 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 say that I typed in a bunch of text, so now they're on page seven. Control home, does it say page seven? Of course not, we gotta update. So we can right click anywhere on it, go to update, and we just need to do the page numbers, not the entire table because I haven't updated the caption. Just moved it on to a different page, click okie dokie, and now it's on page seven. So let me go ahead and do another one, table of tables. And we can go ahead and center align that, hit enter, and then left align, hit enter, and then to go ahead and insert your table of tables or table of equations, same place. References tab, captions, table of figures, right? Click on it because then you can change it to table of tables and then click okie dokie to go ahead and insert all those captions that you tagged with the label table. Well, that was kind of fun. Label table, table label. Let me click cancel and call it good. In the previous training video, we learned how to insert a table of figures. Here I'm going to show you how to insert a table of authorities. And the table of authorities are used by attorneys who have large documents that contain court cases. Or other categories can include statutes, rules, regulations, and so on. That you could say that those cases are quote unquote authorities on whatever the attorney is working on and they need a table of those at the beginning of the document listing those cases throughout the document. And as you recall, in the table of figures, table of tables, table of equations, and even in the index training video, before we can insert the tables or the index, we have to go out into the document and tag or mark all those keywords or items with captions. So they can be included when we insert the index or the table of figures. And it's no less different than with the table of authorities wherein we have to go out and find those cases, statutes, rules, regulations, whatever, and mark them or tag them. So let's go ahead and do some markage here. Let's scroll down to find our first case, regulation. Oh, there we go, we got a case. Now to go ahead and mark that as an entry, you don't want to click to the right of it as we did in the index training video, but you want to select it. And I'll show you why. Let me go ahead and select it. And to mark the selection, Come up here, click on the References tab, go to the Table of Authorities group, and it's right there, Mark Citation. Click on it, and you see where it says Selected Text and it pulled it in? Well, if it wasn't selected, it wouldn't pull it in, and I couldn't make some changes that I'll show you in just a minute. So Selected Text, the category, is it a case or is it a statute, rules, cheat seats? Let's go ahead and click off and leave it as a case. And then if you want to be able to have it as a short citation, well, that's reflecting the selected text, so to make it short, let's go ahead and delete the year and publication information, and there you go. Now, when I click on Mark, it's going to include the long citation as well as the short, but only on the first. So if I have additional ones that I'll be referencing with God versus Natural Man, like on page 3, 4, or 5, when I mark those, it'll just include the short citation. It's only the first one that includes both the long and the short. So let's go ahead and click on Mark close out and it does a couple of things first of all it turns on the codes because if the codes weren't turned on you wouldn't be able to see the mark there the citation in between these wavy brackets and so going from left to right you have ta for table of authorities you have l which means long citation and in quotes your long citation and then you got s for short citation and then your short citation in quotes and then c for case and it's the first case so if you want to make any changes here you can, I would do it within the quotes here. Otherwise, if you go outside the quotes, well, you could be messing around with something that may not work. In any case, keep it simple with your changes, something that makes sense. 
And with that one marked, let's go ahead and scroll down and let's just pick one. Well, let's say that we have the same case here, God versus man. Let's pretend. I mean, use your imagination. Let's say it's that that I want to go ahead and mark, and I'll explain it in just a minute why I'm doing it this way. So with it selected, you can come back up here to the References tab, Table of Authorities, and mark it. And you can see we've got a short citation from a previous entry here that we marked. So go ahead and select it. And with it selected, you can see down below the long, and it's going to include the God versus Natural Man. Now it's nice to see the long citation because if we reference the same case, but maybe a different page, it's good to see it down below because maybe instead of using the same citation, you may want to go ahead and recreate it and have different numbers here. But in any case, you'll be able to see that down below depending upon what you select up above so you can compare and contrast between like if you have a couple of them, God versus Natural Man, where one's referring to, well, 243 and another one's 242. Well, go ahead and choose the correct one that you can see down below. So it's nice to see that preview. And when you're ready, with it selected, go ahead and click on Mark, Close Out, and it just includes, there you go, Table of Authorities, S for short citation, just the short, not the long. Cool. Now to go ahead and let's insert our Table of Authorities that we've got a couple to insert or to show in our table here or to include in the table. Control Home, click below the Table of Authorities, and before I insert it, just like the index training video, before you insert the index, you want to turn off the codes. Why? Because, for example, if at the bottom of a page you have a case that's been marked, you know the extra text to the right of it with the codes on that has, you know, the case, the short citation, whatever. If it's right at the edge at the bottom of the page that when you turn on the codes, it bumps it over to the next page, the top of page four. Well, if you insert this with the codes on, It'll say it's at the top of page four, but when you turn the codes off, then it collapses everything and it'll be at the bottom of page three. So when somebody goes to page four and it's not there, oh, you're in trouble. In any case, make sure that you turn off the codes before you insert this so you can get correct pagination. So come up here, click on the Home tab, Paragraph Group, turn off the codes. Now you're ready. Go to the References tab, go to the Table of Authorities, click on Insert. And it's just like pretty much the table of figures. I mean, you got your preview window, right? And then you can make some changes here and see if you like those changes by what you see in the preview. But over to the right, that's different. For the categories, you can include all the categories. So when you mark throughout the document, maybe 2,000 pages, like all these cases, statutes, rules, and all that. And so you can go ahead and include all of them. So if you mark throughout the entire document, Cases, rules, treatises, well, they'll go ahead and include all of them there. Or if you just want to focus on cases, great, select that. So you can include all of them, or if you just want cases or statutes, rules, whatever you want, just narrow it down. I'm going to leave it as all. And then you can include pass some, keep original formatting. Well, you got your tab leader. Now the from template is the only template that allows you to modify it, because if you choose like classic, well, you can't modify or any of the others. So from template, what can you modify? Go ahead and click on Modify. And you can modify the heading and the body of the authorities. So if you look over here, there's the heading. You want to modify that? And you can go ahead and click on Modify. In the Style window, go ahead and make whatever changes you want. Change the font type, the size, bold, color. Well, if you watch my Styles Training video, this window should be familiar to you. In any case, you can watch it to get all the nitty-gritty details when you want to make changes. So you can do it for the heading for the categories and also the content below the headings for the table of authorities. You can modify and make the changes there. I'm going to click cancel, click cancel. And from template, let's see classic. Oh, that's all right. Let's do that one. Click okie dokie. And there we go. There's the heading cases. And there's God versus natural man. It's found on page two and three. Now, unlike the table of figures, you can't hover over this one and control click to go right to it because that would be kind of odd, right? So if I control click, would it take me to page two or page three? So there's no links in this one. In any case, if you do want to make changes or modifications to the long citation, well, let's go ahead and scroll down. And it's right there. We got to turn on the codes, home tab, paragraph group, show codes. And instead of God versus natural man, how about if we just say God versus Delete it, man. And then let's go ahead and scroll down to the next page. 
which is right here. So page three, let's say that I added more text. So let me hold down the control key and hit enter, enter. Well, we got a couple extra pages. So it's no longer on page three, but it's on page five. In any case, when you make a bunch of changes like that, let's do control home to go to the beginning. And to update this, oh, you want to turn off your codes to make sure you get correct pagination. So it's not only inserting the table of authorities, but when it comes to updates, yeah, turn off the codes. And then go ahead and right click on it and say you want to update. Automatically, God versus man, cool. Updated the long citation, and then instead of on page three, the second reference to that case is on page five. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.